Welcome back to the final best of three series of the Americas region day two still in the group stage But now we're moving on to pool a group B waxen joined by black and uh, black This group B has been going in a rather interesting way I would argue the two teams that we have right now have had um, a rather surprising start to the tournament yesterday well Guatemala on the receiving end of a beating, so maybe not surprising for them as they face the United States, but Venezuela uh, with arguably the biggest upset of this qualifier up until now? Mm, well, I know one of their players, Reiko, mm -hmm. he's a very good player and he's been, well, same as a lot of the other players around in the tier, uh, tier 2, tier 3 scene, and he's really not bad at all. And if he, you know, managed to gather people of similar quality. I can definitely see how this team could be very strong on paper. Yeah, but also hasn't Reiko been mostly a coach for the longest time nowadays? Is he coaching nowadays? I'm not entirely sure, actually. Okay. Maybe you're right with that. But hey, it doesn't mean anything. I'm just going to say, Xiao 8, when he was coaching, it was like both KMMR, you know, he, he won tournaments as a stand-in for his team. When he, when he had to. So, just because your coach doesn't necessarily mean you're washed or anything, you know? No, no, that's a, that is true. That is true. Um, hmm, I mean, I gotta say, this is. Uh, th this is uh, potentially gonna be a very strong performance from Venezuela. I'm not the biggest, uh, you know, fan of the way Guatemala played yesterday, and I would like to see them actually bounce back and put up a slightly better performance, you know, to get a bit of pride for the nation. And it was a rough start to face the United States. So hopefully now they can uh, jump up behind Yogi and, you know, gather up and put up great, great numbers as well, right? Because uh, going out 0-2 would mean there's no more chances of making it out the groups black. Mm, for whom? For Guatemala or Venezuela? Uh, Guatemala, right? They're already 0-1, so if they lose another one, they would be out. Yeah, um... Well, it's got an update, actually, that they will not be playing. Oh! Probably due to technical issues, so... I don't know if that means it's a tech loss or it's gonna be postponement of the game. But, uh, yeah. We'll have to be a little bit patient. Waiting for what we're going to do next. I think we're going to be jumping into another series, potentially. Oh, that's exciting. Um, well, the other series that uh, takes place at the same time... It's, uh, it's Mexico over the United States, which I thought should have been a much more contested one. But with Mexico's defeat yesterday versus Venezuela, I don't even know where to place them currently in this, uh, you know, in this leaderboard, uh, per se, of uh, teams. Uh, so hopefully the United States... Uh, can make a bit of a statement, but I would like to see Mexico put up a great fight. As if they can upset, if they can upset United States, this group turns into something that is very, very spicy. Yeah, but it's a huge upset, of course, as we know. United States is very strong. Um, I mean, they played probably the no disrespect weakest opponent in the entire group. So we don't quite know how strong they are yet. Couldn't really have a good assessment. Right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll we'll have to wait and see how they pair up against Mexico. Uh, so they're obviously a lot stronger than uh, Guatemala, unfortunately. You know, like, uh, that's always said that in regional tournaments. It's usually one or two teams that just stand no real chance yeah. of making it to the top. Mm, it's just the nature of regional tournaments, as you said. Not the whole you can do about it. We're still waiting to exactly hear what we are, what we're gonna do. Well, we definitely have the up next uh, United States versus Mexico on our screens, which is great confirmation. Uh, it's, it's confirmation enough for me, Black. But I, I, I'm excited to see what the rosters will be looking like for these two teams, especially as we have seen US yesterday, and of course it was a very dominating uh, performance from them. And this is going to be the five that they are fielding on the server. Um, same thing, Double King, Monkeys, Flea, Albino Zebra, and RCY. 
Yeah, as you said, we've seen him in action yesterday. Looked good. Both games very one-sided. Not really much to talk about. They weren't tested at all. And if that's because they had a super good or their opponents weren't up to the task, we'll soon be able to find that out. Mm-hmm. And now, and now it's a new patch. That's that's probably going to be the biggest chance of teams upsetting the United States right now, coming up with some cheese that you discovered by yourself or you practiced in the last 24 hours. And uh, it would be a good moment to come up swinging uh, with something to surprise the experience uh, that, of course, Monkeys Forevers and uh, some of the rest of his teammates have compared to, um, well, everybody in this region, arguably. Um, but let's, let's just assume United States qualifies Black to Riyadh, not from the group stage to Riyadh. How do you see them faring versus the teams that uh, have already made it? Oh, it's a tough call, because I actually thought the last iteration of the United States was... Uh, I mean, I don't think there's... Uh, there would be a lie or beating around the bush if we say it was probably much stronger than the iteration we have now. Like the players on that team were... Maybe not S tier players considerably, but uh, probably A to A plus players, pretty much all of them. And they, or what is it? Not in the top eight, was it top six? One of the two. And yeah, so I don't know, honestly. I really don't know. It's very, very tough to tell. Because uh, at that point, we don't know what patch we're going to be playing. We don't know what of course. end roster they're actually going to be fielding. There's so many things that, that play into these kind of tournaments, right? Like uh, the team atmosphere, how do you gel with each other? Yeah, how will they do? Time will tell. Probably, I'll, I'll give him another top eight finish, probably. Okay. Uh, well, we're now looking at the uh, Mexico roster. We've got nine. Arn, Iruko, Yipi, 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 I don't even know. And Ifrit. And we talked a bit about yesterday about Ifrit Black. Um, as a, It's a name that has been in the Dota 2 scene for, well, a lifetime. But he's taken a four-year hiatus, three-and-a-half-year hiatus, and now is back into playing this qualifier for Dota. Last time, fun fact, he actually competed in a very big tournament. He was winning the uh, North American qualifiers, uh, defeating the likes of Ecuador, United States, and Guatemala on their journey to do so. So uh, there's a lot of stake him here for him, as um, he's rejoining with, of course, uh, uh, Nine and... Uh, I guess Lund as well. So three of the five players that had success, um, what is it, four years ago? 2020, 2024? Yeah, four years ago now. Yeah, I, I wonder actually what his pathway was. Was he, you know, inactive? Uh, was he coaching? Have you, have you gotten any confirmation on that or is it still up in the air? Well, uh, he, according to Liquipedia, he's just been out of the scene for that entire period, so... I okay. assume that means he's not played at all or not been part of the Dota circuit for that entire duration. Yeah, well, I hope he's been pubbing and keeping up with the meta because obviously three years ago Dota 2 was a little bit different. It was a tiny bit. <sighs> I, don't, I don't even go as far as say it was a lot different, Black. Yeah, well, let me tell you about 12 years ago when we just started. Back in my day. And we, we only had one courier, and the support had to buy it and then upgrade it too. Of course. So usually it was one one uh, support buys it, and the other upgrades it. You know, kind of like a courtesy kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you wouldn't want to have one support to both. Unless I'm the post four, then you're definitely doing both. Understandable. You just like doing yeah. both of them all at the same time. You know, you'd be a sacrificial position for. As um, just to really excited to see what. Um, the status will be like uh, with this game, as I think we're going to get the draft on our screens in just a moment uh, to see what the heroes look like. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's an Abaddon. Huh. And an Ember Spirit. And we know how Ember Spirits have been faring in this qualifier so far, Black. So, you know me, looking at these 10 picks, I'm already kind of siding with USA. Hmm. Yeah, it's tough to go against that call. However, at least Mexico, they... I mean, they have Venomancer. Yeah, okay. USA. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't think I need to say more. 
Hmm. That's it. Game over. This was going to game two, honestly. I mean, it's an Ember Spirit that says yet to be defeated here. I feel like the stories of our qualifiers have been pick Ember win games, pick Sanking lose games. Thankfully, there is no Sanking here, as it was banned out by USA themselves. And I'm trying to see kind of what these two teams are uh, prioritizing in this draft. So there's a few interesting ones, uh, maybe uh, the Enigma ban, uh, as well as the Broodmother ban, and the Enchantress. So some of these heroes that have seen a bit of play today, but not as much as uh, being uh, early and tested during the ban phase. So Venomancer, again, Black, we had one yesterday and it's first debut at 737. I've been told the hero is good and I tried to play it today myself. Um, it's the same. It's a walking, dying Yale and Noxious Plague. I, I don't... I actually think the hero is in, in the dumpster right now. Well... I've been uh, lobbying for a rework of that hero for quite a while. Oh, have you? Okay. I, I, yeah, I, I just feel like there's so much potential on the hero. You know? But instead, we have this Gale guy that puts down wards. It's like, there's so many more interesting concepts with poison, you know? Like, poison ward, eh. Putting poison in the guy, eh. How about some poison puddle? Oh, I, I might have something similar, you know, but. It has to be something more creative, other than a guy just running in and, you know, most of his kit is basically just him, as you said, running in and, and well, what's next? Dying yeah. after. Yeah, I yeah. feel like his movement speed is not great. Uh, his HP pool is kind of annoying as well. It's, there's a lot of, a lot of bad things about a Venomancer, and I think in this current meta, it would definitely benefit from a few changes, a little bit here and there or everywhere, but. Um, Emperor Assassin's Ven Shadow Fiend. Does this mean we're looking at an offlane Venom though? So which might be slightly more impactful? Mm. That's a good question if it's a supposed to Ven or not. I mean, Core Venom I've always been a much bigger fan of because you might actually survive and mm -hmm. don't just outright die. Yeah. So uh, yeah, if Venom, I think Core. Otherwise, uh, don't pick it. Hmm. Mm. I mean, at least this Venom is much better than the old one. You remember with the, the Poison Nova, where you literally had to go in to all five heroes to actually do anything. Yeah, but wait, this Abaddon, the Aphotic Shield just completely kind of counters Gale. Yeah. And that's where they picked it, right? Hmm, okay. Well, that's I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, and I guess you don't necessarily expect to see Abaddon making his way here. It's not the, the most common hero, but we've seen him quite a few games in the last couple of weeks together, right? Both in Europe and here as uh, finally uh, game one of this series after a lot of back and forth is now on the way. A little smoke action here. While the Weaver is trying to figure out if there's a ward there. Mm -hmm. Nice little cosmetic show going on from Flea. Yeah, I like it too. It's probably him and Monkey Sweat that are the most experienced on the team. I think we checked this yesterday, haven't we? Monkey's definitely one of them. But uh, RCY has been the player that actually impressed me all the most of the USA squad yesterday. So let's see if he can continue replicating his success. As I assume right now he will have not the easiest of tasks uh, versus uh, either Shadowfiend or Templar mid. I, I guess probably TA safely in SF mid, right? Probably, yeah. I mean, it's a nice minus armor combo regardless. True, plus the bonus armor of this Ven. Yeah, so... When it comes to purely armor, they're definitely ahead. <laughs> well, and do. SF should, in theory, crush uh, Ember Spirit as well. So, yeah, they got a lot of good things going for them. It's just uh, the Venomancer. If it's really a core, it might not look so impactful against the Abaddon, <laughs> in the lane at least. It's also Grandmaster Venom, but it's the same one we had yesterday was Grandmaster as well, and it didn't quite, didn't quite show up. It's also a carry Abaddon. I beg your pardon. 
Yep. No, it's not. You're kidding me. Mm -hmm. Weaver 5? Oh yep. my god. Well, the more we talk about this, the more I hate it, and the more I'm favoring Mexico. And like I said, I would like to see them do well in this game. Oh, Hogs coming in. And nice pushback. Of course, the patch from yesterday nerfed a little bit the duration of the Cogs. I believe now um, the pushback went potential from 6 to 4 seconds or something along those lines. So, a bit of a slight tweak to the expanded armature of the Clockwork. Yeah, the pretty slight nerf though. I don't want them to nerf clock too much either. I think it's a very, very fun support hero. Just don't let him do this cock thing and... Yeah, it should be good to go. Oi, 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 careful! One more raise is not gonna be in range. Three seconds until the long range is again. Uh, the long range is off cooldown again. Hmm, finally Shadow Fiend is showing us why he is back in the meta. And I'm, I'm gonna say, you know, the same thing you said about Clockwork, I wanna say about Shadow Fiend. Uh, I feel like I've missed this hero in competitive Dota, it just makes for such an entertaining experience. And Wait, I, might be dead? I, don't, I think he's fine. Oh, he doesn't have mana actually, he's actually gonna fall. Solo kill from ARCY on the Ember Spirit. Yeah, it's not supposed to happen. As if it's supposed to really dominate this lane. That's uh, not good news if you're a Mexico fan. In fact, all their lanes are losing quite heavily. Yeah, this Shadow Fiend killing RCY would have actually been, well, a must do for them. But he's coming in, full HP and mana, despite being one level behind. Oh, nice slide of fist, uh, collecting lasted and dodging the Shadow Ace. Yeah, still have water rune up top. Uh, quite a big mistake actually that the Ember didn't take both of them. As, uh, now there's a lot of potential for the SF to actually dominate the lane back. I think I'm slowly. Oh, the healing self. I think I'm slowly gonna become a Veno hater. You know how I despise Coddle mid. I think Veno is gonna be my next target. Uh, this guy has eight last hits for a while. Yeah, what do you want to do with your 40 base damage, man? <laughs> uh, I, I I know I know. Uh, don't don't play Veno. Yeah, I like that a lot as well. Best solution I've heard today. I'm gonna say something crazy. I think playing Veno is quite fun. I agree. <laughs> it's just it's just sad at the same time, right? It's it, it can be fun, but like in theory, you're theory crafting. You're like, I'm playing Veno. You know, I'll just poison. I'll be a nuisance, and in the end, up, you end up not doing anything all game long. And right now, he's being out farmed by the position four Snapfire, so that's not a good start for an offlane Veno Lancer. And obviously a bad, and it's just a hard counter to it as well. So. Ah, oh, that's how the new shield works. I just, I just saw it the first time in action. There's not like an explosion. It's more like a timer. Yeah, blade mail. It's kind of annoying. I don't like it. I think I preferred the one before. I don't really know why the change uh, they felt the need to do change it. Uh, I'm not saying it's worse per se. It's just kind of unnecessary. Uh, Bino Zebra, kind of playing on the very edge there, but the nice aphotic shield comes in to protect him. I said dead again. Solo kill. Oh my goodness. Arn, you can't be doing this, man. And it's now 9. It's getting dove under the tower. Throws a blood grenade. Actually, Albino Zebra getting in deny range. Double kill turns around and it denies him. Ruko though. Tries to get on top of him once again. Double plague words placed on the ground as Hiruko. That was not the play, my friend. Double king. You're gonna get a double kill. Oh man. This is definitely not going the way they wanted the two. No, I don't think SF is now jungling. These rotating mid lane as well. If they kill the SF again, this game is pretty much over and now they're going. In mid? Yep. In in mid, yeah. There we go. Uh, too late. 
TP from 9, not gonna be sufficient. 5 0 minute 5, 3.5k gold lead. And they're trying to get a kill back in exchange for Monkeys Forever, but the Swashbuckle will reposition him outside of the Clockworks Cogs. Yeah, making it look pretty easy again. Pretty much just like yesterday. And did this Phenomen sort of go for the Plague Ward faster? Uh Yeah. Oh, okay. Dire structures are fortified. You like that? Uh, I think it's fun. I don't think it's great. <laughs> I guess you got clockwork to like pop some words on him and allow hookshot in. Like, I like it if you play Spirit Breaker, Weaver, or like some of those heroes that just get on top of you, right? You throw five Plague Words on him and then you go for it. But right now, it's not just now, I think it's gonna be for the reminder of the game. Hiruko is not gonna have a game as he's getting dove behind the tier 1 tower by Double King and dies. Dies again, yeah. And of course, the Ember Spirit can just free do whatever he wants to do at this point. He's so rich. No, what do you even do? he stole the wisdom rune, despite the storm hammer. Ah, oh, at least he dies for it. Look how deep RCY is playing, by the way. He's two levels ahead of Arn. Yeah, no, he just wants to make sure he can't farm any neutral creeps. I like the way he's playing really aggressively, because they don't have any innocent stuns to. This is incredible. To punish him. This might truly be a mismatch, Black. And you know what? Maybe this huh? is partly my fault. Maybe I actually underestimated the US. I did call that they would be third or second seed. But um, I also maybe overestimated the Mexico, which right now, I mean, have yet to get a game now. The Requiem of Souls is going to come in. We're taking the action on bottom as Hiruko gets collected again. The magic damage is it gonna be enough? RCY 10 HP gets out of there and Flea turns around. <gasps> almost, almost takes Arn with him in the afterlife. Oh, the Weaver, the Weaver. That's what's that. Well, it wasn't uh, um, it wasn't the Snapfire, but the Weaver showed up to the party at the right moment. And Albino Zebra is gonna not die because he's got a time lapse. But okay, pushed out of the cogs and still Shadow Fiend for Weaver. I'll take that trade any time of day. Oh yeah, especially getting Solar XP on the Weaver. Hundred percent. Middle Tower, everyone, go now. Well, good news is it's only a 4K lead. It could be worse. Bad news is it's a 4k lead. Dyer's top tower is under attack. They're not defending this tier one tower, they're actually trying to set up bottom for an exchange, which I think is the correct choice. The only problem is this tower is untouched, and yes, you got a Templar Assassin and Veno. But it's only one point in words. Uh, let's see, can you get the tower trade quick enough before this abandon the snapfire make their way here? I don't think you can. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Hello. Radiant structures are fortified. Hey, hello, hello. Waxen, Waxen. Yes. Oh, I had some uh, connectivity issues. Oh, no worries, my friend. Uh, we're back. We're back. Yes. Did you miss anything? Um, no, not much. Just tried to take the tier one tower, and then they didn't. But America did. No, uh, yeah, maybe we'll try to take it, and then uh, America just, well, stopped him. <laughs> Well, now that it's 8.30, there's a, a 
a very loud crying baby around me. You ever had these issues? Hmm. I, I can literally get a baby through my headset. Oh, this is great. Yeah. Is it like baby shark or like... Oh, no, shadow. Yeah, an actual baby. Shadow being Ooh, gets caught up top. Nice. Oh. Requiem of Soul for separation, but... Uh, the dodge from RCY using the slide of his is impeccable. The hook shot though from the clockwork is pitch perfect. Too bad the targets are too elusive and very easy for them to get out of there. And now Veno is here, ladies and gentlemen. The big hitter. The biggest and the baddest. Oh wait, it's a Venomancer offlane, never mind. Uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot you can do, unfortunately, huh? He's 100 gold ahead of the Snapfire, by the way. The Snapfire is a support. I would skin mostly be attributed to the fact that he got hard countered, right? I'm sure if it wasn't for the bad matchup, it would be amazing. True, but I would... I, I understand this argument, and it's not a bad one. And of course, you need a Veno, which is a sacrificial core to allow the Templar Assassin and the Shadowfiend to farm. So these are all great. But if this is your game plan in the end, um... You gotta protect it better. You can't just run Sven Veno. Yes, the Abaddon is countering him, but the Sven also didn't provide too much on the laning phase. I actually think this... This Veno Clockwork would have actually looked a bit better, personally, but um, it doesn't matter. We can't uh, talk about the Clockwork now, as it's the Sven getting the brunt of this aggressive um, approach of USA. Now, Double King... He's gonna build a Radiance, uh, they're diving the tier 1 tower, bottom, the kisses are flying in, EP uh, is uh, losing a killing spree by the way, wow, he had a pretty good start on the clock so far, and in mid we have a solo kill attempt from Monkeys Forever, but it's gonna be Albino Zebra joining up with the swarm of the Weaver, and Arn, there's nothing more he can do as he falls to a 3 man rotation from the Radiant squad. That's his sixth death already. Pretty much the only one that has a game on their side is the TA. I mean, she's having a pretty decent game, to be fair. Like, sitting at the same net as the other three cores, but... And TA do it alone. I'm a... I'm a say that no. I think so, too, because there's almost a Radiance up. It's gonna... Hard counter her as well. Oh, the, new, the new Curse of Abaddon is pretty, pretty strong. One right click and it slows about 40%? Yep. Yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, one of the reasons we've been seeing these Abaddons go for these builds. Um, uh, he is going for the Radiance cause, just because he's a counter to the Templar Assassin. But uh, more often than not, we see the Manta Harpoon build. Oh my god, not a Searing Chains. EP uh, almost melts there, but... Here's a clockwork outside of the tier for you. We'll manage to get it back to safety. Sadly, they are losing the wisdom rune of minute 14, and the supports of Mexico will be very sad to see that happening. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a big problem, though, right? When. I want to actually get your thoughts on this. Like, if okay. there are so many objectives, right? And you fall behind, aren't comebacks just less and less likely? Because one team can get all of them. Uh, I, th I think. Far ahead. Yeah, I think that is a very strong argument that I've heard a lot of actually uh, pro players uh, make. And uh, I don't think, in theory, it makes sense. But in uh, the way the Dota works, yes, uh, they just continue to pile up more and more resources, and that's why people argue that Dota has become uh, or feels kind of stale sometimes as Nine dies again. Uh, I think, in theory what they were hoping with the expanding of the map was to allow for more mechanism of getting back into game right uh clearly, clearly that hasn't happened and i don't know is the solution just make the map even bigger uh, thank god i'm not a uh, game developer that's what i can ask for oh kiruko as a mech doing quite well using noxious plague but no follow-up there oh shot Requiem? Requiem? No? No, okay, they don't have enough stuns without the spend there. Well, all you did is kill yourself there. 
Easy peasy pickoff again. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like the, it, I, I don't like the checklist sort of style of Dota. You know, it used to be very intuitive and instinctive game. It was like a checklist. You know, minute seven this, minute five this. The only real checklist before was bounty runes and maybe the Roshan timer as well. But now. It's uh, bounty runes, uh, tormentor, wisdom runes. You know, it's uh, it's a little much. Oh, nice wreck of soul on top of the storm hammer. Do they have the fear? Yes, they do. It's gonna be a good kill on Albino Zebra, who might be the le least farm hero on the radiant side, but still, 662 gold going in a dire favor. And I, I think the solution. And this might take another couple of years until it comes through in Dota. Is um, maybe put multiple objectives at the same time, so then the teams have to deliberately make a choice of what they want to go for. At the moment, you go for the Tormentor, you get the Wisdom Rune as well, and you must get it right. Um, but what if, let's say, one objective is completely across the map, and you got to decide: we're going for minute twenty-one Wisdom or for the Tormi? And what they are going for right now on the server is killing this TA who hoped was uh, safe in the wishing wells, but clearly not the case. <laughs> yeah, easy pick up there again. After the top tower should be pretty close or maybe even beyond an 11k lead. Which at this point in the game is uh, once again pretty insurmountable. Yeah. We've seen this yesterday, pretty much the same thing. Hiruko. Good observer where that spots him, that's where they're chasing him down, and it's gonna be another godlike screen for RCY, who at this current moment in time, Black, is um, arguably contesting for the MVP of the qualifier alongside Sebastian Slade. Yeah, well, what can we say, right? Another Ember looks literally exactly the same. Yeah, I think that's why we're gonna give the edge to Sebas for now, as he has uh, done it on multiple heroes, and I think RCY plays this Ember the second time in the qualifier. We need to see him on a different hero first. Maybe he won't have to be on a different hero. Keep giving him his... They're diving the tier 3s, they're behind the barracks, Ease is uh, getting chain stunned uh, from the ceiling chase to the wrong thunder, he is out for 40 seconds now, EB on the clockwork trying to push them back with the cogs, but it's gonna be double king with another triple going in for the team USA's favor, and now they're hitting the first tier 3, will fall, 3, three minute 20, and I actually think First melee racks will follow as well. They do have the Requiem, but no Noxious play. And this time, there is no black hole in the game. There's no Enigma to set it up for them. And uh, yeah, minute 19, first set of racks collapses. Yeah, yesterday, both the games, I think, ended in... Was it 23 minutes? Yeah, more or less. A below 25. Yeah, so this might be even faster. Well, depending on when the enemy wants to GG out, of course. They probably think they have one more fight left in them. That goes south. And that sounds good. If Arn doesn't die here, if he falls here. Oh, nice. Cogs. Uh, sorry, nose hook. Into Cogs now. Albino Zebra trying to clear a path for himself, and he's gonna get out of there with the Pavis. Um, also, Pavis received a little bit of a buff this patch, and I don't think the item needed a buff, Black. Well, nobody bought it. I guess that's just their way of saying buy this damn item now. I, I agree, it was pretty strong already. I think there were people buying it. Yeah, not that many though. Yeah, I mean, because Pipe and Breed were OP, oh. but they're going for it. Perfect Meteor still hammer into a Requiem of Soul. Now the Cog's pushing them back, but the Requiem hasn't come through yet, and now everybody's invulnerable. It's a bit too late for the Shadow Fiend damage, and now Hiruko, nothing else he has to say as RCY goes for the double dive. Deeper wants to get a triple kill, and he's gonna collect with Slide of Fist. Now he's trying to 
throw in some chunks of damage at this Ember Speed. RC White turns around. Perfect slot. Searing Chains allowing Monkeys Forever and Double Kick to come in. Chase down his heroes. East wants to get the kill on RCY and the Umber Spirit falls. Ultra kill will be the stop for him, but Ibex are coming in from Mexico, trying to commit for a deeper dive as USA is relentless in their pursuit. Yeah, they're not even trying to go for the Rex, they're just diving them in under the tier 4. I mean, why not? You know, have some fun with the game. Might as well stay the it. Now Potal is next. This is a bit of a misclick there from Flea. God strength being used. That is a support van, don't worry. You can't do too much. Lowest farm hero on the map. And uh the final set of racks seem to be falling in five, four, three, two, and done. Mega still no GG. Hmm. They're smoking up. They want to go for one more last hurrah, but Monkeys Forever says, I'm gonna stop that, but they're still not that strong, my friend. They still only made 22. Shadow Fiend plus Templar Assassin have a lot of damage, as we can see it fly in right now. They kill the Pango, they kill the Ember, and they're holding for now, but Double King is going deeper, and this Abaddon is not as squishy as the other two cores now. Blinking forward, Requiem of Soul, buyback from the Templar Assassin, and Mexico is still fighting. They want to get the kill onto this Abaddon. No more borrow time. No more Manta style, they just need to lock him down somehow. Turning oh. over the fight. They want to get this, but this is not smart. Double King gets punished for being overzealous as East gets a double kill for his buyback. This is kind of like the, these pub games, you know, where you have a super big lead and you just kind of want to end with, oh wow, if we get the solo kill here. No. Solar Crest is there no. to protect him. Albino Zebra is going deeper and tries to use a time lapse. Is it going to be in time? Yes, it is. They don't have. And the sufficient lock for him. I think the Templar Assassin desperately needs an Aghanim Shard, but she needs so many more items, especially now that they're playing versus Mega Creeps. Yeah, I like the fact that we're just kind of ignoring that uh, there is a Mega Creep. It doesn't even feel like it's. Well, <laughs> well, it doesn't feel like it. Well, let's let's see how how long until that sentiment is still here. Oh, we're just waiting for them to team up again. At least and probably finish the game together as a team. At least Arn has a nice uh, hat, and by hat I mean um, the Venom word on top of him. Monkeys forever, overstepping a little bit, but he does a shield crash out of there, gets four staff out of position, but all this time trying to deal with the pesky Angalier. Base has been invaded by creeps, and oh, Hiruko has to pop the Guardian Reefs to keep himself alive, but look at the kisses flying in from outside of the high ground, and it's just melting, forcing all of the Dire Heroes to go back, reset into Fountain. Right clicking the tier 4s, there are no 45 for just a little over 20 seconds. Another Searing Chain perfect onto 3 heroes and double killing is just right clicking. He's there forced to have to protect the Templar Assassin, doesn't seem to be the case. They're getting glaggered and destroyed in base by the Mist Coil. No Sven for 30 seconds, but the 4s are still standing and turning onto double king with the borrow time. Just holding in the fountain. Oh my god, the cogs almost push Monkey Karang uh, forever into fountain. And now they're going for the Requiem of Soul. That is the thought process of this play. So a fear. A couple of raises now. Bino Zebra with a glide of himself. Arn is on a one versus three. You need to help your Shadow Fiend who falls but does have a buyback. Coming back into action and they are continuing. Double kill for the SF but the Ancient is falling. Triple kill for the Shadow Fiend. The Ancient still stands. A little less than 50% HP, but they are all doing it. Mexico is holding as we get an ultra for the Shadow Fiend. Hmm, another interesting hold. I mean, the gold lead is you know, slowly getting reduced. Is there a way? I surely not, right? I don't think there is a way, although it's, it does make it slightly more entertaining. 
Uh, let's see. What does Dota Plus think? Did they give it more than uh, give them more than a one percent chance, or are we stuck to one percent for the last couple of minutes? <laughs> yeah, sometimes the last piece can be the hardest one, right? Mm. I really think they just need to wait for each other, going together. Which they're kind of just rushing and trying to play with their food. Yeah, Monkey's forever going in for the solo uh, Rolling Thunder at first, and then the fight happened when he ran out of it. It was a bit of a... a bit of a... oopsie. Yeah, I, I've seen crazy comebacks, so you definitely gotta still be careful and play the game properly. Well, let's see. Round three. Third time's the charm. Can Mexico do it three times in a row? Noxious play being thrown in by Double King doesn't care. Just going forward with uh, Ancient and East. He doesn't have any more buyback. They need to work right back to Fountain too, but now the nice quick shot onto two targets. Trying to deal enough damage. You do have a double uh, Daedalus on the Templar Assassin, but nobody on the Radiant side seems to be taking any damage as there's no Requiem for now. Ancient still exposed, no Fortify just yet. RCY, the Abaddon Angels are doing great work. Requiem comes in just to clear some of the creeps. Nobody is under it, and now the Harpoon comes in. EP gets pulled back into the dying hands of RCY's Ember Spirit. Mm, 4v5 hold, can they do it? They're peeking, they're climbing. Time. They're going too deep. Arn going for flea, and he's gonna get a dominating kill streak. But Shadowfin is now getting right clicked and collected by the flying drive near damage. And they're all out. Sven has a buyback, but he cannot do anything. Is trying to come and assist the Templar Assassin, but the Ancient is falling, and that will be it for Mexico in this game number one as United States in just under 30 minutes all over the finish line. Yeah, but once again, it really didn't need to take that long. Definitely took that long only because they were playing with the food again. Mm. That can, however, be a problem, you know, you play against a team like Ecuador or uh, one of the teams that already qualified to ISF, like you can't afford these kind of mistakes. I really feel like these series, not just this in general, but like the entire qualifier should be played with utmost seriousness because it should be sort of like a final sort of preparation test or preparation stage for the big tournament, right? Like. I, I mean, me personally, I've never been a big fan of, you know, you know me. I don't BM, I don't clown around. I just end the game and go next. Always been a big advocate for that. I just feel like it sets the right tone always and it kind of shows you what you can do. I think so, too, especially in the tournament when you represent, like, um, your nation. I think it's quite respectful to just be straight to the point, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I completely agree. Give it all, 100%. Because if you... Again, it's also something that you need to, to realize, right? How good are you? What do you need to work on? Like, how good are your drafts? Uh, gameplay here and there. Like, a team like USA shouldn't struggle to enter game for 7 minutes in the enemy base, you know? Yep. There's no need for that. But yeah, of course. Obviously, it was super easy for them. Uh, outmatching them like no problem. And yeah, we'll see what game two will have to hold for us because once again, not pretty high right real, more like a United States real. I'm wondering. I'm like, I mean, we, we've had this already a couple of times today. Um, for the team just focusing what they got, and you know. Mexico had a good game plan that in the end we saw as uh, they were trying to hold for the better part of 10 minutes. Uh, the only problem is you gotta hit your timings, right? If they would have had the, these timings before losing literally every single building, maybe there was more of a chance for them, but right now that wasn't quite meant to be, and that's why the USA came in and they are with one foot closer to winning this group B and, um, you know, making it play off of those qualification games. Yep, Ecuador has already done it, pretty much. Now America can follow suit, which would then mean they're both avoiding each other, which is a shame, but having both of them at the finals, you know, that's uh, kind of like a dessert, right? You have a nice main course and you get a nice dessert for Riyadh. 
Oh, and we know how much you love your desserts, Black, don't we? Oh, yeah. I mean, most people don't, and they would be shocked. Especially coming from a quote-unquote uh, you know, personal trainer, somebody that, uh, you know, shouldn't be associated with these kind of things. But nobody needs to know. You know, but you can keep a secret. Of course, of course. We didn't just put it on, um, on blast on stream for everybody. Well, let's send it to a short break before we return with what could very well be the final map of today. Oh, sorry, you blink and you'll miss it. Uh, and uh, We're already back in. And what did you miss? We don't know. Um, the blobbing is full. The bladders are full. Uh, the, my bottle of water is kind of empty, but you know what I hope is not going to be empty in this game too. I hope Mexico's passion will still be there because despite playing 1% um, win rate probability for 10 minutes, they were still believing. They were still fighting to the very end and I want them to keep that same attitude as uh, they're going to try to actually turn around this entire qualifier because right now, if they lose this game, I believe they would pretty much be guaranteed not making it out of the group stage. Yeah, with zero two, you can't get top two. It's uh, as you said, guaranteed to be impossible. Uh, but how do you turn a game like that around, or a series like that around? You know, we know the United States are strong. They're playing around a lot. And yeah, do you foresee any sort of change? the next game no <laughs> no I, i'm just theory crafting there is a way actually even if they lose there is a way okay they if guatemala somehow beats venezuela off stream yeah you following me and then Mexico beats Guatemala 2-0 tomorrow. There are two options. There's either a tiebreaker between Mexico and Guatemala, sorry, Mexico and Venezuela, or Mexico just automatically qualifies in second. So there is a chance. The chance is very slim, even if they lose, but there, 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 there's a chance. And if there's a chance, there's a dream. And if you know people, I, I have a dream. No, sorry, what? That's not that's not where I'm going with that. Anyway, uh, so mathematically, you could still lose and have a chance. Um, but you know, there's a big if Guatemala can uh, um, upset Venezuela, who defeated Mexico yesterday in a 2-1. Um, it's going to be quite tragic for Mexico because this, if they lose here and they're out, they could have actually still played for the qualification. They just lost in three maps, and you know. Essentially, that means you lose the best of one. You trade trade maps, you go one one. You lose the decider, you lost the best of one. Yeah, and deciders are uh, especially best of one deciders. They're always really brutal, but you know you've had your chance in a group stage uh, with multiple games to play. So, actually, what do you think is a nicer format, or I guess a more brutal format? The one v one tiebreaker or uh, <laughs> just a normal bo one tiebreaker? Uh, I think one v one is just like absurd. I don't think that should be a thing. It I like it's quite a lot of tournaments nowadays. I, I think one v one is cool as a tournament in itself. Like if you want to do one v one, fine. Have paparazzi win the seventh one v one tournament of his career, uh, but to have the tiebreakers at stake, um, that's just awful. Like, what if you have a mid laner that's not flashy? Because that, that, that is a thing, right? You, some mid laner, like remember back in the day, Fata, right? Fata was never a flashy mid laner, although he had periods in time when he was really good at Dota, right? He, he was running this slightly less bombastic heroes, but he would still deliver. He would play your DPs and whatnot, right? Uh, and then you would go in a 1v1 Shadow Fiend or Puck matchup, and he, okay, he was a Puck player, fine. But his Shadow Fiend was never good, so he would lose that by default just because he didn't play the hero. That doesn't mean you, your mid laner was bad, but you just put a lot at stake for him, and the team doesn't qualify because of the tiebreaker, and then you're like, oh wow, our mid laner sucks, which he doesn't really, you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. I think he was the only guy I've ever seen build a mech 
on an invoker. He did this on the Shadow Fiend as well, don't worry. Yeah, I know that, I know that. Yeah. He actually did play SF, but in the... In the least flashy way possible. Yeah, he wasn't like, good at this, but I remember. I was a Cloud9 fan, because Bone7, Romanian and all that, right? And this is me watching Cloud9 at TI. They kill the Aegis carrier, just outside, I remember it was outside bottom tier 3, they were dire. Fata blinks in and channels Requiem, literally two seconds Ten before seconds the Aegis respond, like the guy responded. It was... I cried that night, Black. They ended up losing a game. Whoa, 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 okay, okay. <laughs> What is this, 9 a.m. therapy? No, not today, Black. Not today. It's too late for me to go through this. Dude, um, it's... As you said, 9 a.m. My crying session is already over. Exactly, exactly. We can't talk about it right now. But, but yours is about to begin. Yeah, well, this is... Uh, this is a, They're about to make some more people cry. Uh, the United States has had a hell of a day when it comes to competitive achievements. I believe they won uh, the gymnastics gold for women at the Olympics today. Now they are steamrolling through this entire group stage. So uh, it's, it's a good day to be an American. Well, that's more like it. At least the opening looks you know, already way better than last game. Like, there's no Venomancer. An average hero. Uh, once a bit of supports. Yeah, hair problems. Honestly, I just want to go bald. Five yeah, seconds just remaining. Cut all the hair off. See how it looks like. How, how do you think I would look like a bald? Can I pull it off? Oh no. You're quite the pale dude, aren't you? Yeah, I would say so. I think you could then. Yeah, you could. And sometimes if you're like slightly more tan and then you go bold and then obviously your scalp hasn't been tanned you, you just look at like a like a screw I, I, mean, I mean i do tan quite easily but in general i'm not like really tanned or anything i mean if you're not tanned in general and you live in singapore that means you don't tan easily bro okay fair enough i mean yeah i guess i'm not <laughs> I guess I'm quite uh pale Oh man. Anyway, looking at the draft, uh, Shadowfin. Why bald. not? Radiant team Is he? Yeah, I mean, look at that. He looks kind of bald. Hmm. He has two horns, but the rest is. Where's the hair? Also, which Jakira head is cooler? We have to settle this discussion now. Ten seconds what do you mean? Remaining. Cooler. Yeah, which one looks better? Oh, okay, I thought you meant cooler, and I was about to say the Frost Jakiro. Um, maybe? <laughs> ah, the Frost Jakiro kind of looks like a club. I do like the Fire Jakiro more, I think. Like, <laughs> like, the head shape of the uh, Ice Jakiro looks so derpy. It looks like he doesn't have years, right? Like, why does the Fire Jakiro have years and the, the, the Frost one doesn't? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> well, well, you can't win with everything in life, you know. You already have the better uh, facet. He all, also, ha he also, <laughs> he also has the better chin. Like, look at that jawline on the frosty hero, right? Oh yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like a Henry Cavill right there. What are these bands, man? Clockwork band out. Okay. This is very strange, like, United States banned their own Weaver that they won with last game, and now Mexico banned their Clockwork, for reasons unknown to mankind. I think they're probably afraid of, like, Clockwork setting up for the Shadow Fiend Raises Requiem. Similarly to what Mexico attempted in game one. Fair enough, if actually. Radiant team pick. Rubik. Oh, Rubik again. It makes sense against Jukiro. All the spells are still uh, really, really good. Mm. I honestly don't know what what Mexico needs to do or attempt to do. Because like in games like Game One, there isn't there isn't much to analyze. You know, like if every door game was like that, I would be jobless. Do you think this is actually RCY? asking for the Rubik 
He wants to prove us that he can do everything that Sebas does. And it's actually going to be Shadowfin safe lane with Rubik mid. Uh, why not? If uh, if he's thinking that far and, you know, give it to him. Let him see what he can do. Just a reminder, the boss died uh, zero times on Ruby. Oh. And Tower Hoodwink, okay. I mean, the draft is way better than the game one. That's for sure. You think so? <laughs> I kind of yeah. like the draft in game one. I think it just uh, came down to not winning any lane. I, of course, the Veno. The Veno. Remaining. Yeah, you know what? You're right, you're right. This is a better draft. Of course I'm right. Five seconds remaining. My 9am my brain is never wrong. Oh, what time do you usually wake up on an average day? I'm a morning person. Like, I would be waking up uh, an hour ago or two hours ago. Oh, well, good morning. Yeah, well, my... I don't know. I always feel like if you wake up that late, you know, gamer hours or 5 p.m., the day is over, you know? And then you do it again, and the next day is also over. <laughs> and then life I is know, over. S s sleeping through the day just feels awful, for me at least. I, I, I guess some people like it. But I, even if I go to the gym or something, I just feel like I have no energy. Clink's ogre, wow, okay, what's happening? I don't think anybody knows what's happening. I, for a fact, don't know what's happening right now. There's gonna be some tar bombs thrown, that's all I know. <laughs> but I think this is USA actually uh, practicing some stuff that it might be cooking in the uh, last couple of days. And actually, if you remember correct, in the matchup versus Guatemala yesterday, Guatemala banned the clinks versus USA, which I think uh, is something that maybe they've been practicing or something they've seen them run in pubs. And now USA, they're gonna have so much attack speed. It's, uh, it's incredible. Wind Ranger, okay, it's good against Klings, of course, the whole evasion. Dire team ban. Good pick. I mean, I like the draft, honestly. Every hero has a stun, they have pretty strong lanes. United States, on the other hand, like, I'm not convinced of Ogre in this current meta. It feels very slow. The character is a buff bot. Ten seconds mm. remaining. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like Mexico's draft is better. I, I, I'm, 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 please, please, like, give me a second. Chat, look at me. Let's see that we have a smart ass in the chat. Someone saying that Mexico beat Guatemala. Cap. That's impossible. Because the game is tomorrow. Thank you. There we go. Huh. Sit down. Take some lessons from your daddy. There we go. Where were we? Um, um sh showing showing the, the internet world how to how to get it done. <laughs> I like it. Absolutely, you gotta assert your your. your I, I, this is not dominance, bro. But you, you know, you can't be just me spreading misinforming e, people. Your e dominance. Yeah, my e dominance. Yeah, well, what am actually, I? I'm an e athlete. Um, I'm actually an e athlete, and the game is tomorrow, by the way. Seconds remaining. Tangalier, Ursa, Bandout, Black. Um, Five seconds remaining. No. No? And you're gonna ask a question. The answer. The question was, are you the greatest player in the history of Dota 2? I'm not a liar. I'm not gonna say yes to that. Mm. Fine. No? Fine. Well, it's you good. know me, I'm a, I'm a pretty realistic dude. It's good for us to clear up the uh, clear up the air, right? Because uh, some people might think that you are one of those cocky dudes that you know. Yeah, who'd ever think that? Well, we have a bit of an update actually from uh, someone else in the chat. Uh, much much kinder actually than the first person I was addressing, saying that Guatemala lost in their scrims versus Mexico. But as Black could probably confirm with me right now. Uh, although scrims are very important, the results in scrim don't always reflect what's happening in officials. No, 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 not at all. There's, there's been so many tournaments where we lost like every scrim and then we won every tournament game. I'd much rather try out everything and lose every scrim than, you know, have any loss happen in the actual game. So, like, practice is practice. It really doesn't matter. It's just there to, to try out things. People's attitude is different. People's mindset is different. 
Yeah, you, you can't really take scrims at face value. Like, how often do you hear a team say in interviews, yeah, we scrimmed against them and we had no chance. And then in the actual tournament, you know, they scrimmed against, it's just like out in the group stage first. Exactly. Yeah. Scrims are good, but they're not an indicator for anything. They're running a lot of reserve time for this final pick. Um, also, the Underlord, uh, Morphing Ban. Uh, Interesting. Afraid of another strong offlaner, but Mexico's gonna get the CK. Uh, okay. That means it's a Wind Ranger mid, which I prefer a bit more than a Wind Ranger safe lane. That's gonna be uh, quite a big upgrade. My only question is can she match up versus a Shadow Fiend? Hmm. Not quite sure about how that one goes. Five seconds remaining. Well. Maybe in a, in a crazy world, uh, now nah, it has to be Carrie Clings in SF mid. What off lane could they pick? It's already most of them banned, to be honest. Beastmaster? <laughs> of course it's oh, Beastmaster! Course. What do you mean by what? of course? Why didn't they pick this earlier? Because uh, they're still winning no matter what they're playing. Yeah, well, this Beastmaster pick is pretty... Uh... Pretty good. Well, I, just get gotta, drums. Uh, I just gotta yeah. highlight this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, his facet is called Beast Mode, which is absolutely hilarious. But the problem with uh, for Mexico with Beastmaster, I already highlighted the attack speed that's on the United States side. Now, with the Inner Beast Aura plus the Bloodlust, and you already have a Clink's Shadow Fiend, the physical attack damage will be coming at you even if it's low which it won't be but if let's just assume it's low you're gonna be so many hits flying at you that i don't necessarily see how you survive yes okay wind ranger is a mischance with the wind run but everybody else kind of just dies yeah the physical damage up is definitely crazy good uh they have pretty good magic damage too with the sf and beastmaster of course uh, i mean overall it's a very well balanced draft but I don't know, honestly. If if I was in a tournament, what lineup would I prefer? Mm. <laughs> Black. Yeah. I can also hear the baby. Oh, you can also hear it. Why? Congratulations! Congratulations! It, I guess. Dude, it's super loud, man. Like you, you didn't tell me you're a dad. This is uh, great yeah. news. This oh, is well, great. I mean, I've been a, I've been a captain of a lot of my teams, you know. So it basically, makes me dad already. But I see. Yeah. I see. I Literally, see. Literally, what the problem is? So I'm at the corner of my apartment, right? Okay. And right at the other corner is where this is coming from. So I guess the wall separating us is not very uh, well soundproof. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what I have to deal with every day, dude. That kid is crazy loud. So now you can imagine why I only sleep 3-4 hours and then you couple that with construction? <laughs> well, I guess we can spam ah! some baby rages in the chat for Black. Thank you. 30 seconds to battle. Pretty loud kid, right? Oh wow, Flea? Walks up the high ground, offers his life to the gods. I see if I get the D ward as well. No. No. All right. So, oh, he he did his. No talisman first again in the offlane. He does it every game. I did it before the nerf even though. Maybe just a flea thing. Alright, so Olga took the learning curve. Of course. Rebuild the points at level 2. It sounds so bad, like your support is useless for like 2 creep waves.
Yeah, no, I guess you're right. And then you get like three skill points, so. You like this learning curve, that's it. And any initiation from here on out can just kill him. Like, if he gets pulled in now, he's just dead. Like, right now. Huh? I thought I could just kill him. Okay. Let him live another day. You know the saying? Live and let live. Do you like the ogre facet? Yeah, I usually dislike facets that just have like an immediate early effect. Pass. I don't, oh wow 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 things is gone no oh, ogre is gone actually sorry he didn't look very tanky at all radiance courier has been killed Yeah, three zero up. But we have to see, of course. The problem with amateur teams is usually that they don't really know how to transition into the you know, mid game after winning lanes. So we'll see if they have some sort of similar issue or if there's not a problem for them. That's a rough one. Yeah, but I mean, look at the CK though. He is huge. Yeah, she did take the liquid fire facet. Yeah, I did. I guess whoever's dead again. As a question real quick. I think opening map up early is really good of course. And if you win the lane without liquid frost anyway. 
what's the problem, right? Look at look at Beastmaster though. He's he's done pretty much. Not a solo kill. Wow. Oh, like second game in a row when RCY just has his full number. Yeah, CK, of course, as we said, is really scary. He will have to be here to play around. Because obviously, he's the strongest one to have right now. His armlet is halfway done already. It's just minus six. Radiant are scanning. Yeah, I mean, he's having a fantastic game. He'd have to act as the backbone of the team. Yeah, truly, it will, will be a hard ask for them. As I'm also quite concerned how Monkey Forever is going to come back into this game with the farm, but um, he's so far behind that he needs to take the Wisdom Rune that's going to actually leech some of that XP. But since the Ogre has gonna, is going to have his ultimate at level 5, not that big of a loss. Well, Beastmaster can historically come back pretty easily by just spamming axes. Yeah, that's what I mean. So the fact that yeah. he's behind now is not that big of a loss, because when he's gonna uh, spend about 5-6 minutes in the jungle, if that, he will be up to par with the rest of the cores again. So the early lead that Mexico has on some of the cores will be offset uh, very swiftly, unless they go aggressive, plant some observer words and try to contest those stacks. Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, Arn again. This time it wasn't quite a solo kill as Albino Zebra was nearby, but it's a one for one. And now the Macro Pyre coming in from Eevee, who is very farmed on this Chikiro. Gonna allow him to get the kill onto the Ogre, maybe. It is very tanky, but nine. And Eevee's Chikiro will be able to get that. And that is a great favorable trade for Mexico. Yeah, putting them. Well, not into the lead, but as you said, put him in a pretty good position, especially compared to game one. But look at what Beastmaster's doing already. That massive stack. Probably gonna bring him to level seven, roughly. Maybe a bit more, even. Maybe eight, almost. Uh, all the action up top while he's farming. Hiruko is trying to get on top of Double King or RCY, but they're turning around, and the long range damage is. Oh my god. Almost burning through it. There's a blink! On the Shadow Fiend, going aggressive, getting the kill onto the Centaur, and now 9 Telekinesis into the hands of this Soul Eater Beast. And it's gonna be a double kill for the SF. Yeah, and look who's level 8.5 already, suddenly. You guessed it, it's Beastmaster, woo! Oh my goodness, and he continues to spam the axes. He just needs arcane boots, and he has a trusty shovel. He gets a couple of mangoes to help him with the mana problem. Yeah, incredible. He had 18 last hits before he killed that stack, and now he's already up to 43. Yeah, his point booster is already purchased as well. As we said, his net worth is well, not looking great, but pretty much. Oh, if he gets another stack, he's gonna be like level 10 or 11. If he gets another stack, he's gonna be the most farm hero in the game. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. that's let's how Beastmaster recovers, right? Let's see, did he pull them at the right time? That's what I want to see. Is it going to complete the stack? Uh, we didn't get the sense. I don't think he did. I think uh, it's way too hard to stack again there, but still, so many, so many uh, neutrals to already collect. So he's going to be fine, accelerating his farm, getting himself closer to the drums of Slum. And um, he's actually coming up top with the armlet. Might want to set up for a kill onto the Clinks. Yeah, he's pretty much the only hero they haven't been able to touch yet. Yeah, last time they tried to pressure the Klinks, RCY was here uh, for the turnaround. And guess what? RCY is here again. This time smoked up with a full arcane rune in the bottle. Who's going to be the target? Be careful though. The fight is very delicate. Ooh, our the He gets baited. It's a perfect bushwhack, but RCY blinks and onto three with a fabulous Requiem of Souls and now East. Turns around with a phantasm, nice reality rift, and the shadow fiend just melts. That's what I mean. That's the 
El Parvez. What a shackle shot from Arn. Finally stepping up on this Wind Ranger just as he needed to also get a bit of a gold influx for his rotation. Well, I guess the good news is that. I don't know if you can call it good news. Oko was farming middle, and Beastmaster is getting closer to his axe, which is the counter to the CK, so. True. I'm quite happy that they're prioritizing his farm a little bit. I mean. I can't believe he just level 11 suddenly. <laughs> oh. Uh, it also proves how much how many stacks Rubik has done, and uh, because of the gold uh, that obviously you get from the stacks, um, you can see the Rubik is also out farming his uh, position four and five counterparts. Yeah, which is actually why they're holding a gold lead despite being negative for the kill score. Hmm. How many arcane boots do they have? One, two, three arcane boots. Javelin flying in for the Wind Ranger. A little bit, of, a little way off from having a Maelstrom about uh, 2,000 gold. Oh, Shackle doesn't connect. Neither does the Bushwhack, but the Focus Fire is onto the Ogre Magi. This is a very beefy boy, and now they're turning around the Stampede to actually help them escape. But perfect Ice Path onto two targets and the Macro Pyre as well. They really want to kill Albedo Zebra, and he will fall. It's burning Macro Pyre. Uh, flee? He did just stood in that for like a good 10 seconds. I mean, he turned around with a sharpshooter. That, that was deliberate by him before the bushwhack connected. Yeah. Well, I'm out of Wind Ranger looking. Once she gets Maelstrom, she's gonna be very strong. SF is a very hit or miss here, we all know that, right? So, there's a chance you might just not do anything in this game. Yeah, how's the farm on the clinks looking like? Uh, I think he's not too too bad, actually. Um, oh, for the net worth, only behind a CK and the Shadow Fiend, but... Um, this is an impressive performance from East so far, and he needs to stay alive to complete the Orchid before joining up with his team for the next team fight. He's not that far from having it. Armlet Orchid Power Threads, that's why he is leading this network chart, and he can get on top of any single hero of USA and just kill them 1v1, I think. Pretty much, yeah. He also will have to make sure that he actually takes care of the Beastmaster first, because he will kill off his illusions very quickly. Who now has his axe finished and it's flying out? Oh. oh! They smoked up, snuck in the triangle, and East was falling back from farming. The dire jungle dies to the Requiem there, and uh, I feel like every single time we have an underdog team, this seems to be quite a bit of a story. You get one hero that is farming, you're trying to play for protect one, but you don't manage to protect him in the mid game. And right now, the first net worth player on the map with quite a bit of a lead has fallen behind the shadow fiend and uh, that's 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 gonna be annoying because you want to keep accelerating the moment you get the orchid yeah i'm at orchid at minute 15 is uh, very respectable but as we said we don't know how much you can make happen with it all the clings the clings uh, he could just run away Oh, and now Arn is gonna die to the magic damage coming in. It's it's a pretty much disaster as Flea gets a double kill. Two cores losing their life there. And Beast stepping top to... Oh, it's Roshan time, huh? Certainly yeah. looks that way. You've got Drums of Slum. He's gonna go for it, but I think RCY wants to get the Aegis here. Slightly squishier of the two. Um, Beastmaster doesn't really, well, doesn't really die when he has drums. Although it, it has been nerfed, right? He gets uh, less self heal. 
Or the agent to go to the beast master. I like the decision. As I said, he's the kind of the counter to the CK. So him having two lives makes perfect sense. SFT being back to the mid. Oh wow 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 wow. If you get stunned up there you're just dead. You be more careful. Yeah, give them an inch and they could punish it. As um it is the beast you mentioned. With the Aegis. I think you need to smoke a couple of dust and try to find the clinks as well, because allowing clinks to, you know, free roam around the map, use his ultimate, get some creeps, is a never a good look when he's the one actually finding your centaur bottom. But that's a beefy target. Blame me in double bracer, you can't burst him as a solo clinks just yet. Yeah, or maybe never really. Like the blade mail will be a big deterrent always. Wait, did the clinks buy the burning barrage shot? Yeah, there's no no torments there, not minute 20. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised to see it prioritized. It's a it's a really good spell. Yeah, it is. But now Hiruko, he needs to get out of there, and I think it might just be too late. They're gonna find him, he does break the smoke, he's back, playing in a very nice shadow pocket, out of vision, but now he's gonna step out, the Observer's gonna see it, and... He's lingering a bit too much around this tier 2, maybe trying to get his team to join up with him, but his team spots Monkeys Forever, who does have the Aegis, the Shackle Shot doesn't connect, They're trying to get him the roar for the turnaround, the Ice Pass Stampede, they really want to get on top of him, but it's not going to be too late. And now the Hoodwing gets the first uh, piece of the damage of the Shadow Fiend. They're trying to kill the Rubik. Will fall. A lot has been invested for it, but one for one. Not that bad of a trade when you're playing into an Aegis. I'd agree, but the Aegis is still out there for a very long time. And the gold lead isn't really diminishing in any way. What is building next? BKB. Probably BKB on the CK is go time for them. Yeah, but is it going to be there before the Shadow Fiend BKB? Because that's also going to be a great uh, point for USA themselves as they're going for it. Bushwhack doesn't connect, but look at the players. They're all behind the Tier 1 tower. And uh, I think if Hoodwink oversteps, he's going to get jumped. And that's what's happening. He didn't overstep. He's now blinking forward from Monkeys Forever. Full trust and confidence in the drums and ages, but the... Jumping on Hiruko in the backline onto the Shadow Fiend. There is literally no follow up. And the Centaur gets sent to the graveyard. Yeah, so easily. As we said, the damage output is crazy of this lineup. So much attack speed. Just overall um, burst damage now with the Beastmaster drums. It's going to be tough for the CK to have. Much impact either. Like you can protect yourself with the BKB, of course, but it doesn't apply to your illusions. So it will all depend on initiation. Who can jump first? Despite the kill lead, the objectives are starting to fall in the favor of USA. If you are a Mago supporter, you are gonna be more than happy to see what they've achieved mid right now with the usage of the haste rune and RCY with a rare mistake on the low ground and mid gets punished. The ogre can't do too much in here. The mass TPs are coming. It's actually a single TP from the Beastmaster and Albino Zebra will most likely survive unless the Phantasm illusions do the job. But Monk is forever here and so is Double King and then turning it all around. This is unkillable. Look at the Beastmaster. He's just marching up the high ground. Hiroki blinks forward trying to save his Jakiro, but that's gonna mean Jakiro's dead, and the central gets caught by the telekinesis. Blade Mail turn around, Monk is forever, and Double King with damage. Yeah, well, you kill the SF, but the real carry is still alive in form of the Beastmaster. Level 17 now. I feel like we've seen that so many times, you know? This time he was even completely shut down in the lane. Usually we see this net worth with him winning the lane. He got 5.4k damage in that fight, by the way. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm not surprised. And now they're smoking up. They want to steal the Wisdom Rune, minute 21. They know someone's coming for it, and uh, they are correct. Someone should be coming for it, but <laughs> not quite yet. Are they going to use the scan? Radiant does have a scan. 
Are they gonna throw it up there or are they just gonna find an easy pick off? Oh, they're using their weapon. They're not hesitating. EP has no chance. And I think now they're trying to find a turnaround. There's gonna be the Ogre to be the first casualty potentially for the Radiant. But no, he still gets away. Hiruko tries to chase him down. Albedo Zebra, it doesn't matter. We're seeing this chase as the Wind Ranger and the Chaos Knight are falling. RCY with the amplified damage gets the final Centaur. And it's a full Team Wally from USA. This is the second game in a row, Wed. It looks kind of even for a while, and then suddenly just completely snowballs the other way. Top tower is under attack. Mm. Well, I guess it's just decision making in the mid game, right? That we spoke about. I think America is much better at recovering from, yeah, bad or unfavorable engagements and lanes. Whereas Team Mexico is really struggling with that. To identify also, how strong they are in the mid-game and what they can do with it. We also talked about the importance of blocking stacks, uh, camps in the triangle. Uh, with the Ancients and that clearly didn't happen as the, that was the first way of getting the Beastmaster back into the game, right? Even if you don't want to block it, maybe play some aggressive Observer Ward so you can try to contest it. Um, if not, this is what usually happens when you're playing Beastmaster. If you do manage to shut him down, which of course Mexico successfully achieved, then it all turns in or on your head. And is that is that a level four Dagon on the Rubik or only level three now? Level four. Okay, that's close to five. Mm -hmm. Middle Tower is under attack. Uh, yo, good guys. Middle Tower got owned. Wait, yeah, of course. Solar back Crest back. also picked up on the Ogre. Get even more attack speed. Why not? Oh. What did you see? I just realized that uh, you can skill talents one level earlier on Ogre. Yeah, of course. That's... I didn't read through that ability. That is 100%. the facet, Black. <laughs> yep. Uh, you get minus one from level two onwards, basically. Or the reminder of the game. Yeah, still that impressive. Tier two, final outer tower uh, will get claimed by Double King on this Klings, who does hit like uh, an absolute sentinel. Um, just destroying everything. The, the more time he gets, of course, to spawn more of his uh, skeleton illusions, the better it would be. So even prolonged team fights, right? Uh, Mexico might say, oh, if we could survive for longer, we might have a chance. But are you really going to do that when you're playing into a Beastmaster in the Clinks? They thrive in uh, team fights that last longer and longer. They do. Good news though is CK has BKP now. So they're gonna do something now. The longer they sit in base, I mean they're smoking out. They're smoke right now, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are they trying to find the... there? There's no tormentor. The no, no. <laughs> uh Roche top? Uh, I mean it could be a good timing. Roshan will be spawning up top anyway in uh, twenty eight seconds, so it could be. Yeah, it's not the fastest Roche, not the slowest, so Oh, they're gonna find a Rubik. Oh, Please, flee. quite a big one. What is he doing there by himself? Uh, by the way, we had a Templar Assassin game last match and we didn't take talk about the fact that he had vision on the Roche timer. Alright, yeah. Completely forgot about that. <laughs> Roche is up. And now you gotta make a choice. You gotta go back to the triangle to fight or try to get Roshan by and catch your opponents by surprise. Nine got, does get caught, but it's not the biggest loss. You can maybe still attempt something. It doesn't seem to be the case. USA is rotating. They're coming in hot. They're coming in fast. And they're about to find at least a Chikiro. A TPL from Arn. Oh. It uh, gets out, but that should also mean a free Roche. Centaur's still there. And I think Shadowfin is finding him. RCY is going to get on top of him. He does not have a Yule Scepter. And that's going to mean a safe EP out. Oh, 
My well, next on the list should be Roshan. And I'm probably gonna try to end the game from there. Or oh, flee again. Another good pick off. This is good. Uh, this Rubik is very, very farm. He is out farming the Centaur by a wild margin, and of course, it's not the biggest loss for USA as it created sufficient space for the Roche to be uncontested. Ooh, SF! This is good. They're getting on top of the big targets now, and uh, 1 HP. No ages. Does survive. Monkeys forever again with the BKB, but they're going on top of him, and that is a lot of damage. The reality rift reducing the armor of the Beastmaster is more than enough to find them the first kill. Um, but Double King has arrived, and Beast is alone, has the BKB, but the roar coming in, and look at the damage! No more chaos, Mike. Almost am hoping to, but yeah, you can just see the CK's damage though. Beastmaster died Impressive. in you know a second. So oh, that's always going to be a big factor. They still have Glyph. And they, they have a banner though, oh yeah. Glyph doesn't do anything if they put a banner down. Look at Klings. <laughs> Their building damage is absolutely insane. Tier 3 does get fortified though. Still fighting for what this worth. Um, you know what, Black? I actually think this might have been a great, great, uh, great hero matchup for the CK to try my build and go for the irrationality facet. Imagine right there you had a 33% chance of uh, breaking the Beastmaster, right? Uh, you still killed him, but then if you apply the break, the drums are basically no fight. As the final team fight might have issued right now, they're killing the Rubik, but the Centaur, not long for the world, gets annihilated by the magic burst damage of USA. Yeah, they got direct as well, and now they just disengage. Look at the attack range, man. Sniper who? We don't need it when we've got a uh, Klinks. 825, by the way. Range? What is range? <laughs> Mm, uh, interestingly enough, um, despite the Rubik dying three times back to back, uh, and that was a one for one trade, the gold swing still went in Mexico's favor, which is a very interesting, uh, very interesting statistic. Oh, Centaur gets clashed in, uh, clobbered by a little bit of a stun. Nice long range break coming in from the Hoodwing. Banner does get placed, Centaur tries to maybe get in range to right click it, but oh my god. The splash damage so much, blink onto high ground for Monkeys Forever, the Requiem of Soul will follow and the Centaur has no more chance of surviving, neither does the Jakiro. And it's another double kill for this beast-like Shadow Fiend from RCY, nice shackle shot but is there the damage? There, look at the telekinesis, Dagon creating the space, they're trying to get on top of Monkeys Forever, the, this Beastmaster finally falls but at what cost? It's the Chaos Knight price you have to pay as RCY gets an ultra kill. He really wants a Rampage. He almost got it in game one. He's gonna go for it. No, he doesn't care. He just wants to commit to the Barracks now. Nine, getting chased down. Sharp to connect. And it's gonna be the Rampage indeed as RCY puts his name in the Hall of Fame of IESF Americas. <laughs> yeah, you know, why focus on ending the game if you can just get a Rampage? I would have probably done the same thing. It's always really Absolutely. fun. Yeah, that would really fun to get a rampage for sure. Style and profile on your opponents. Make a statement. It's the American way. The fireworks in the background as Arn is actually trying to come in with a glide mirror. Focus fire. This is a lot of damage, but RCY has no teammates. It doesn't matter. Double King is actually there. He is the only teammate you need as he's turning around and trying to get some... Uh, Change kills, but no, it's gonna be the true cores falling as um, they overstayed their welcome. Very reminiscent of game one, where I mean, they don't yeah. have mega creeps yet, but very close to it. And uh, yeah, I mean, USA seems to be obviously again, they have a huge lead, but they seem to be a bit sloppy when it comes to going high ground. 
We're going high ground per se, just ending the game, I guess. The right way of saying yeah. it. Yeah. No, that is a great point. And I think it might be, you know, a sign of the patch as well, um, that uh, their attempts might be slightly too early. And you talked about collecting all of the objectives around the map, and uh, they have collected some of them, but maybe not sufficient. And uh, the itemizations might not be uh, pitch perfect, as we don't have... We don't have a Yule for this Shadow Fiend to, you know, kite a little bit of the team fight. Uh, the Klinx uh, has uh, not used his 82nd BKB. So ended up getting chain stunned there. You know, a couple of uh, uh, slip ups. But again, when you're so far ahead, 26k net worth lead at minute 32, uh, those slip ups don't mount into, well, anything substantial. Yeah, you're right with that. Beastmaster picked up Shiva's God. I mean, they're all just getting huge on the whole map. It's huge and huger and hugest. Oh, nice. Stampede. Yeah, I think Does they thought the uh, Glade were connected, but did not. East has a uh, Invis rune. Would love to find a target here. Maybe the likes of Klinks, even the Beastmaster would be great, but no. He's not going to find anyone, and he's joining up with his team back onto the safety of their own high ground. The meter of the word is Observer Wars Black. There's an Observer up instead of the top melee racks and the bottom one as well. That extra vision, that is the name of the game when it comes to this level of play as Monkeys Forever has the vision, jumps ahead, goes for the roar, now he's no more four step but does have the BKB, tries to run away, needs a bit of help, but they are stopping that pursuit. Nice hoof stomp, jumping forward, catches two, Ice Path only onto the Ogre Magi, and now the turnaround with the BKB Hiruko, you're not a centaur, you're more like scent food, into the mouth of the Double King Blinks, is our barn? Gets Lee again in exchange. Seems to be the only hero that they can kill. Look at Albino Zebra, he's so beefy. Many maces to the face, and the ogre is still standing for over eight seconds there. Now the Glide Mirror coming in from both targets, but the Requiem of Soul forward from RCY connects onto three. It's gonna get him another double kill, and now it's only Shadow standing when it comes to the, you know, well. The high ground of the radiant side. And yeah, how can they really even defend this? Oh! Good attempt, shackle shot, pitch perfect, connecting onto the bird and east with the reality rift again pulls the Beastmaster to his death, but the damage is so overwhelming. He's trying to heal up by hitting some creeps, but it's not gonna be enough. Santor is back though, They're trying to change them in down. No focus fire for 15 seconds. The double edge does some damage, but double king completely being ignored, allow himself get a kill onto the wind ranger and right now hiruko really wants to get this one i don't think he has the tools that it needs and rcy juking left blinking back in teasing this center and the good game gets called united states secure their spot out of the group stage here we go first seed for them first seed for ecuador so as we said they're going to avoid each other which is a little bit tragic, you know, I would have loved to see them duke it out for one spot, but then again, both of them are very well deserving of uh, getting there. Into their qualifier, of course. Well, more like elimination stage of the qualifier. Um, yeah, and I think I think both teams should make their way to Riyadh, and if one of them, obviously, if they would face each other, one of them, well, would not make, not make Riyadh, it, yeah. would, I mean, yeah, would, want would that. be a big, would be a big loss. Yeah, we definitely don't want that to happen. Yeah, again, I feel there isn't really, unfortunately, too much to analyze. Like, America... The landing phase was actually pretty good this time around, I'd say. They actually had an advantage on the Radiant. Mm -hmm. But then they just know how to recover. They, they needed to block those Ancient Camp. Like, if they were blocked, Beast doesn't have a way back into the game. And the game doesn't become... Like unwinnable at minute it fifteen. Doesn't something. become this, yeah. Yeah, like Beastmaster was so shut down. He had eight hundred net worth, and Yasuke had like four thousand. The only reason he came back to this game is because of the Rubik stacks and his own stacks with the Quill Beast. Um, yeah, you gotta stack those. I'm uh, sorry, you gotta block those ancients, cause otherwise this is gonna happen every time. Like Beastmaster, literally is so strong because he does that. Now, truth be told, it's not easy to block those ancient camps, but you gotta find a way. Smoke in, put a sentry there, 
do something. Make them fight for it at least. Yeah, it was probably the stacks. It wasn't like a double or a triple. It was like a triple, uh, a couple uh, stacks there. And um, this is the this is the point where United should actually earn the score even in their favor. The goal was going towards them, but this is the first uh, big high ground again. I think the team is much better on the center than the Venomancer, and um, hopefully. In the reminder series tomorrow, which uh, it's going to be something that Mexico will try to play a bit more of. But right now, like I said, they are uh, most likely not going to get second place as uh, Venezuela has defeated um, Guatemala as we speak. Right, so uh, quite quite sad to see Mexico be eliminated because I think they put up a great performance, especially like you mentioned at the beginning of this game too. Yeah, but ultimately there can only be one winner, and it well deservingly is the United States here. They weren't even playing seriously still, so I still couldn't really get a good read or assessment on their actual skill level. Uh, at what percentage did they play? Maybe 60? 70? Not sure, to be honest. Maybe even less than that. Uh, but they were having a good time. They were playing really well. Of course, again, the high ground problem. You can't really afford to have that against uh, better teams, especially if you do make it to those finals in Riyadh. So yeah, of course, something to work on. Yeah, there's still room to grow. And I'm gonna ask you, looking at the scoreboard right now, back black, who is gonna be your MVP for that series? The whole series. Uh, I mean, in game two, he had a couple of missteps on the SF, but it's very easy to have that. I'm probably gonna give it to him. Really, I, I would have argued actually a double king on the clinks. I think his Abaddon and the clinks were both very, very solid. Yeah. Um, obviously, he had a lot of space being made for him by the rest of the squad, but you know, I'm, I'm happy either way. Uh, I would argue that with those missteps though from RCY, my, my opinion is that Sebas is still probably the favorite to win the MVP of the whole qualifier. Yeah, I mean, Sebas is uh, it's pretty beastly, let's put it that way. Although this was a 19 kill performance from RCY, so you know. About five deaths, take. you know, KDA. Exactly. It's less than four. You know, Sebas sitting at like, I don't know, like 80. 15 KDA, yeah. Uh, <laughs> 80. I don't know. Um, well, what an incredible day of Dota 2 we had at our ahead of us. This was the second day of three, ladies and gentlemen. And it's it's basically the end of the national qualifiers black we have one more day the next qualifier which is a quite a long way from now uh will be a multinational it won't no, no longer be you know the, the local it will be uh, teams from china teams from southeast asia meeting in that one so with one day to go black i gotta ask you what would you like to see from the reminding teams tomorrow remaining mm, what would i like to see I would like to see somebody actually put up a fight against Ecuador and, and the United States because I feel like both of them haven't even been tested like at all. I just want to mm -hmm. see how good they are and how they deal with the difficult situations because they haven't encountered any. You know? it's, like, it's like the spoiled kid that doesn't know anything in life and then they encounter the first difficult situation they're like, what do you do now? I see. Well, let's have to put your thoughts and hopes on hold for just another about 20 hours or so ladies and gentlemen as this was the end of day two iesf america's qualifiers for dota 2 i was waxing joined by black and we will see you tomorrow to see who will take final two dota 2 slots for the world esports championships stay hyped